Hello everybody, welcome to the live stream. Hope everybody's doing well today. John, thank you for the 100 bits, my dude. Sadly, you're stuck in Southeast Asia. Hmm. Hmm. Johnsonius just resubscribed for six months. Six months. John, thank you so much for the six month resub. Welcome back. OMG, it's Hypno! Whoa, 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 whoa! Johnsonius just gifted one subs. <laughs> John, thank you so much for gifting a sub. So yeah, welcome everybody. Happy Monday. You know, Monday is in fact the best day. People are like, uh, it's Monday, whatever. No, Monday is the best day. Because I stream on Mondays and I make Mondays better. Consummate V's. What is this? What does this mean? Chiggy Chamber cheered 1,000. Hey, Chiggy, thank you for the 1,000 bits. I made your Monday better? That's what I do best. Flashin underscore just resubscribed for 82 months. Hey, Flashin, welcome back, dude. Thank you for the 82 months. Hello, Mac. Consummate Bees is from Trogdor and Strong Bad. Oh, so that's like super old. JVDK77 just gifted one subs. JVDK, thank you so much for gifting us sub, dude. Shenanigans afoot. Shenanigans afoot. That's a great name. All right. In we go on the server, and there's nobody on except for Zuma, who is AFK. We have the server to ourselves, everybody. What do we do? What do we do? Uh oh. Scam train started. <laughs> uh, Daphnis, thank you so much for the 200 bits and getting the scam train going. <laughs> yeah, you scam train crimes pranks. New armor set? That is a thing that we absolutely can do. Hey, Sepplica, thank you for the 100 bits. Yeah, let's look at making a new set of armor. Let's do that first thing. We have, like, I've been wearing this set of armor now for like two weeks. Gross. Gross, right? We need, we need fresh, fresh gear. All right, let's make a new set of armor. John, thank you for the 100 bits. That needs to be washed. It does need to be washed. It really does. All right, we're going to get some diamonds out. We're gonna get Come some on, of this just out. just subscribed. Whoa. Why is that not, oh, right. Uh. I'm trying to figure out how you pronounce that. Is it Colmasate? Anyway, Colm, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you, thank you. You broke me. You broke my brain. I couldn't figure out like what you were seeing there. Uh, let me... We're not doing this anymore. This was like a temporary thing and I've just left it here. We get rid of it now. Get rid of all of this. Yeah, thanks guys for uh, for getting that scam train started and for for participating in it. I appreciate all the scam hype. <laughs> uh, we still have some trap doors. We're burning these because I have too many of them and they burn. All right, so while that's doing the thing, let's go make ourselves some armor. That's the British way of spelling armor is armor, because they add the extra U. Well, I just made a block. Good job, me. That is not what I meant to do. 
Uh-huh. 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 And then there we go. Nice. We did it. All right. And then we're going to need the 16 gold. There we go. Things are happening, everybody. Blah, blah. There's that in this. Hot Tub Harry just gifted one subs. Yo, Hot Tub Harry, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Appreciate you, dude. All right, so we also need to make the upgrade template thingies. And that requires a bit of diamond as well. And it also requires some deep slate, or is it nether? I don't remember. It's either netherrack or deep slate. We're going to need both of these, though. They do love the letter U. It's true. It's true. All right, so there's that and this and then one more. So we have the extra for later. Uh, so, yeah, we got to make these as well. I need more diamondes. Bum, 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 bum. So there's a copy of that one, and then one. Oh no no no! Yes, yes, that's right. That is right. So we put the extra one in here. Okay, so we got our trim. We got ourselves our netherite ingot. So now the hard part is we got to figure out what color is it gonna be. Should we do copper? Should we do quartz? Should we do iron? Were those the only remaining ones? Uh, I know for sure that we need to do those, but I don't know if those are the only remaining ones. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, we for sure don't have copper. We for sure don't have quartz or iron. These are the ones we do have. Oh, I guess we haven't done lapis yet, have we? We did uh, amethyst and we've done diamond, but we don't have lapis yet. So what do you guys think? Copper, lapis, quartz, or iron? We got one for copper, two for copper, three for copper, two for lapis, one for quartz, one for another one for copper, lapis or copper. I'm seeing lots of copper happening. We got like four for lapis, five for copper, six, copper, 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 copper. All right. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Capper. All right, we're doing copper. We're doing copper. We're doing it. It's happening. Stand back, everybody. Those are oak, dark oak trapdoors. Uh, I forgot I have a smithing tape right here. Uh, so we do this and we do this and we do that and then this and then one of those and then one of these sweet. We've done the thing. So now we do this and this and this. Now we got ourselves a full set of copper dirty armor. Rusty looking. It's got a certain charm about it. It's got a certain charm about it. Guys, the biggest question though, does this armor make my butt look fat? Hmm. Hmm. No, honey. These pants don't make your butt look fat. Your fat makes your butt look fat. <laughs> All right. We're brave and 221 just subscribed. We're brave and thank you so much for 
subscribing for six Rip months. Raven 221 just resubscribed for six months. Wow, thank you so much for the six month in advance sub. Appreciate you. Okay, so we got the armor done, but we need to actually go get the enchant. So that is the next fun bit. We're gonna need a shulker box for this. I'm afraid your butt makes your butt look fat. Shush! Stop it! Stop opening and closing! Stop it! Ding shulker. Door open. Door closed. Bum, 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 bum. We're going to the kitty cafe, everybody. Meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. That shulker needs some duct tape, right? Cora Penelope. Is that a reference to something? I feel like that's a reference to something. Are all these cats named now? This is my cat, Fluff Face. Oh, it says you have fluffy face. Uh. So only like two cats are ever named. What the heck? Slacking hermits. Oh wait, no, this one was named. So uh, this one's named Atlas and this one's named Hot Chocolate. <laughs> I think Joe did that. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, so yeah, we need, we need books. We got to enchant our armors. Uh oh, Aqua Affinity appears to be running out. We need a Depth Strider. We need a feather falling. Nope. What else do we need? Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a reason for these two to exist right here, but what that reason is, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there is a reason. I got four protections, a respiration. Four of those. Am I going to have to restock this shop for Cleo? Cleo, what the actual heck are you doing? False's prank? Oh. You know, honestly, I haven't gotten a chance to watch the Hermit's videos for like the last little bit. So there is probably a lot that I am missing out on as far as like pranking goes. I need to go sit down and watch some Hermit videos apparently. Feather Falling, Respiration, Depth Strider, Uncle Affinity. Okay, so we are missing four mending books. So what we are going to do We're probably going to go visit Cleo's book trading thing and maybe do a little stockerino for her. Door opened. Door closed. Hello, ASVM. Go fishing. Get out of here. No, really. Get out of here. Uh, We need emeralds. I don't know how many emeralds we need, but we need emeralds. You're still here. I said get out of here. What are you doing? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, this is so touch annoying. Uh, what do you like to have for breakfast? You made muffins today. Ooh. Muffins. PCFC just resubscribed for six months. PCFC? 
Thank you so much for resubscribing for the sixth month in a row. Okay, we got too many books now. Uh, we only need 27. I'm gonna get a shulker box of mending books. I'm gonna take my four and restock the rest. That's that's the plan right now. Do 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 do. Uh, what do I like for breakfast? That's a good question. Generally for breakfast, I just drink coffee. But if I am gonna have some kind of food, I will have um, door open door closed. Eggs. eggs. I'm actually a big fan of like bacon, eggs, sausage, that kind of stuff for breakfast. But I was just like skipping along the ground there. Um, but yeah, I generally just have coffee anymore. Uh, if I do have something more substantial, it's gonna be something like eggs, like I said. Ooh, look at Cleo's stuff happening over here. Do, 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 do. Coffee counts as food. No. Got it. For Cleo from Joe Hills. Sharpness, I'm breaking. Aqua Affinity. Aqua Affinity cheaper elsewhere. Looting Silk Fetch Fortune Protection. Infinity. Cheaper feather falling elsewhere. Mending. I don't have a shulker. Hope's fate tipped five dollars. Small tip for the mean streamer. Yo, hey, thanks so much for the the five spot. Wait. Mean streamer? How am I mean? Wait a second, how am I mean? I feel like you're mean by calling me mean. Lolacre just resubscribed for 29 months. Hi Hypno and chat. Happy Monday. Lolo, hey, thanks so much for the 29 months, dude. Thanks for the tier two support as well. Very generous, thank you. Uh, Mending. I just threw, oh no. Okay. Wait, looting? How did I get looting? This guy gave me looting. There's Zambi. I forgot. It is not safe. Okay. Tell you what. Be right back. So you get somewhere away from the mob so I can place on a bed and sleep. Uh, up here seems safe. A long stream today? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how long we're going to be streaming today. Okay. So this guy is... 355... Right here. Whoop. Oh, that was a looting as well. Freaking rip. All right, let's put this away. I'm actually going to grab these. These are. How does Cleo not have a thing here? Maybe, hold on, is there anything here? We need a grindstone, and I don't think I have one on me. I want to get my, these books converted back. Are they all looting? They are looting, 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 looting.
I am not mean, you are mean? Calling me mean Door is mean. Opened. Door closed. I am not mean. I am a very nice Ahipano. You know, I'm gonna put this in my ender chest. We might need it again. I might make a mistake. I don't know, but uh... Have I heard Cubs horn of me? I have not. Is it a good one? Are you guys proud of whatever the horn is? Door, Door open. Closed. Have I launched any rooftop neighbor displays today? I haven't, but like, I can't really do it if my neighbor isn't online. I'm the only one on except for AFK Azuma. A lot of the hermits. A lot of the hermits, as you know, um, uh, are traveling because of the charity event. So they're not online because they're not like, you know, at their PC and stuff. Uh, I don't think Wells is, was a part of the charity event. Uh, but yeah, he's not online either. So, you know, mending, 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 mending. Actually, I'm going to hold off. I need more emeralds. Mending, mending. Huh. Looting? How does that keep happening? Huh. I don't understand. Nice game, Mojang. So we did the things. Is there a crafting table here? There is. Fantastic. Okay, so here's a shulker box of mending. This was my grindstone. This was my ender chest. And then... I mean, honestly, since I get free enchants from Cleo, I should probably just do this so I stop taking it from Cleo's shop making her having to refill it but it's fine for now it's fine it's not like we're taking all of these enchants like every day and like running this shop out constantly yeah were these palm trees new oh, those are some nice looking palms those are like the palms that you see in california right i feel like What are these? Is he setting up? Corrales, what are you doing, dude? You're making everybody else look bad on the server. Stop it. Corrales and his bushes. Uh, right. I was going to go drop these off up here. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Mending was over here. So four of these are mine. Let's get those put away before I recently stock them. Mending, 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 mending. And the rest of these we're just going to restock for clean. That was our good deed for today. The dripstone trees are so good, they really are. 
Corrales is a master of his craft. I still got to work on the outside of this base. Like I, I kind of uh, started working on it a little bit in like a creative world, trying to like figure out what I want to do. The biggest thing I want to do right now is just kind of like clean up this weird terrain stuff that's going on over here and kind of like reshape this little hill. I kind of want to keep the hill, but like this extended portion of the hill needs to go. Same thing over here. Like we got this hill. This is where we got our mine shaft area dug into. It kind of, I, I like it because this one here and this one on the other side kind of match. That's fine, but like they're bigger than they need to be. So like, I'd probably shave this off around here and just get rid of all of this stuff. I don't know. Um, but like, that's about as far as I've gotten. <laughs> I'm procrastinating. Guys, I am not good at landscaping. I'm not good at interiors. Door opened. That freaked me out. I was like, I thought I heard footsteps. I thought I saw something. I thought there was another hermit in here. I'm procrastinating on procrastinating. That's right. Uh, let me... Let me put these away. Right. Uh, shulker box can be put away. And the grindstone can be put away. So now we got to go to the end. Yes, I am still thinking... Like, the base is not finished, guys. The base is not finished. Like, we just got done doing the upstairs portion, right? This all looks fine. Actually, this looks better than fine. This looks good. I'm just going to come out and say it. I did a great job here, okay? Fantastic. Loving it. But the base is not done. What? You've been playing at least 20 minutes? Should be done by now. I know, I know. Oh, wait. We needed to go to the end. Or, uh, to the nether. No, to the end. But to the nether first. Bum, 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 bum. We ah, oh, I'm supposed to land right in the portal frame. Who reserved one of your windows for the room way back? That would be Rendog. Do 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 do. Having all the end portal thingies around is pretty cool. Glad we got that taken care of. Uh, guys, new video dropping in about an hour. <laughs> For those of you who like my YouTube stuff. Uh, we're basically catching up on like the last two weeks where I haven't posted a video. So like, it's going to include dr the dragon fight stuff. It's going to include the big dig stuff. Um, that kind of stuff, you know? I've been slacking on uploading videos. I may or may not have been playing a little bit of Path of Exile and not doing YouTube stuff. We we don't know for sure if that's what's happened, but it may be. It might be. Can neither confirm nor deny. Uh, mending unbreaking. Mending unbreaking. Mending unbreaking. Mending unbreaking. You thought it was religion? I, I mean, of course it was. It was Easter. I had to take time off for Easter. You know, religion and all that stuff. Obviously. Oops. Oops. 
Um. So this and this, this and that. Twelve levels. The helmet's so expensive. This and this. Twenty-four levels. Speaking of Path of Exile, have you considered creating a new channel for non-Minecraft content? I mean, I've thought about it, but like if you're talking about making like a channel for Path of Exile, I don't think I'm gonna be a PoE content creator. But I mean, my live stream channel is kind of that, where like, I don't always play Minecraft on my live streams. Let's kill the music for a little bit. I don't always play uh, Minecraft on my live streams, right? So like, I'll play other games and then those other games, but I play other games on stream and those other games get uploaded. Uh, to my live stream archive channel, right? So it's kind of like a second channel for that. Am I excited for PoE too? Not really. Everything I've seen about it looks worse than PoE 1, honestly. I'm sure it'll get better. But there's a reason they're pushing back, like, the, uh, the beta and stuff, right? It is just not there yet. And finally, this and this. The skill tree in Path of Exile does look crazy. It does. For like, uh, new people who have never seen the game before, you're like, what the heck is even that? I agree. Um, and it is overwhelming for like, a brand new player. But it's really not as complex as like, you would make it out to be. Did you even... That shouldn't even be possible. Oh, already back from Michigan? I never went. Twenty-six. No, that's true. I have, um, let's see. Can I show this? I can show that. I currently have 2,200 hours in Path of Exile. It's the only Steam game I have installed right now. 2,200 hours in this game. And even I struggle with knowing, like, which mods, which prefixes and suffixes and things like that I should be focusing on and all this kind of stuff. There is just so much complexity to the game. You hear Zed smells funny? Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe Tango would know. He was like pretty close to um, doing the, uh, the cooking thing. I saw that, that was pretty funny. And there we go. There is a full set of fully upgraded silence armor trim copper material netherite armor. And I won't forget the shulker this time. Which I seem to forget every time. But not this time. That's only a few hours. I wish... I wish I knew how many hours I have in this game. 
I mean, I'm probably glad that I don't know, honestly. But I bet it's like a lot more. <laughs> like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm actually kind of surprised Mojang doesn't have that information logged somewhere. Like you have to have an account to log into a server, right? So you'd think that they would have, um, you'd think that they would keep track of like how long your player account has been logged into a server. You want to say over 10,000 hours? I would say it's easily that probably a lot more than that. Yeah, there's there's an eclipse going on right now in the uh, United States. I think it um, it peaked, right? I'm not actually sure. Door opened. Door when, closed. When there's an eclipse, is it like eclipse the entire length of the eclipse, or does that happen over time? Because like if you look at a map for where the eclipse is, it's like a streak across the United States, right? Does it start like at the bottom, like sooner than like the top, or does it all happen at the same time? I'm not actually sure. It peaks in about 45 minutes, but is is it like is it peak for everybody in 45 minutes or is it peak at the very start? Like I don't know how it all works. The peak moves. Okay, so it starts in Mexico. That makes sense. That makes sense. It starts in Mexico and ends in New York. Interesting. I would love to have been to see it. But like to get to anywhere where the totality would have been for me, I think is like an eight to 10 hour drive. And like, while it would be cool to see it, I don't think it'd be worth the drive. I'm hoping that, I mean, the next one won't be in the US until like 2040 or something like that. Never, I, I think I heard some, I don't know the exact time frame, but, uh, Hopefully I'll be able to see one, maybe not in the US, but somewhere before then. <laughs> 2099? I won't be alive then. 2040 sounds so wrong. Yeah, 2044 sounds more correct. And I think, is there, no, hold on. I thought I saw a website before. Um, Solar Eclipse U.S. Dates. U.S. Calendar? A list of solar eclipses visible from the United States. Does this show the, the future ones? No, this is... Oh, yeah, it does show future ones. Okay, so if we go down to, like... I, I know you can't see this right now. Uh, Here we go. Check it out. Are you checking it out? Of course you're not, because I don't have it on on here. Zoom in. So in Florida, we will have a total eclipse in 2045. So all I got to do is live here for like another 21 years and boom, easy. Just don't die in 21 years and easy, easy. If you blind yourself looking at the eclipse, you think you have other problems. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to have solar glasses. I'm not sure if it's safe to look at the eclipse when it's when it's in totality without the glasses. It probably is. I'm definitely not a doctor, so don't take my advice on that. But I mean, if the sun is completely blocked and you're just seeing like the periphery of it from behind the moon then I would assume it should be safe to look at, but I don't know. It's too cloudy to see here right now. Oh, that's too bad. Now this shows Florida. I'm actually kind of curious. I'm actually kind of curious. Is there anywhere? So Alabama's gonna see it 45. This isn't actually the site that I wanted to look at, honestly, Wikipedia. There was like some, oh yeah, here we go. Future eclipses, science, NASA. Here we go. Uh, okay. 
future eclipse dates, solar eclipses. So October 2nd, 2024, an annular one. Is this where we want? No. What's the difference between annular and partial? I actually don't know what the difference is. Total is obviously what you want to see, and that's what's happening right now. Uh, a total solar eclipse will be visible in Greenland, Iceland, Spain, Russia, and a small area of Portugal, while a partial eclipse will be available in Europe, Africa, North America, and the Atlantic Ocean, Arctic Ocean, and Pacific Ocean in 2026. Annular means you can see a ring of sun because the moon is further away in its orbit. Oh. Okay. I always assumed, because believe it or not, guys, believe it or not, I'm not an astrophysicist or a scientist or what whatever ist you need to be to know about eclipses. Believe it or not, I'm not one of those. I always assumed... <laughs> That the moon was big enough to cover the sun no matter, like, when it passes in front of it. I didn't know, like, it has to be a certain distance away in its orbit to, like, completely block it out or not. I'm not a sunologist. I am not a sunologist. That's right. Definitely not an eclipseologist. <laughs> okay. This shulker upstairs... This shulker upstairs needs to shut up. Goodness. Goodness. Okay, so let's check it out. Check it out. This is pretty much the gear that we wore last season, right? Towards the end. We're the Dir Dirty Boots Gang, Dirty Boots Club, whatever. And then uh, I made the pants because I, I, I said make the pants to you, Cub, and he made them. And then I made the helmet to match later, and I think I made the chest plate. I don't actually remember, but... We're basically wearing this armor uh, most of last season, yeah. The rusty armor, that's right. So now that we've done that, we need to put up our netherite trimmed netherite armor. Let's grab... Oh, that's my last armor stand. I'm gonna have to make more. All right, grab this. I also need... Do, 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 do. The chest plate that goes with that. Place it with this chest plate. Uh, grab more rockets while I'm in here. Nicer now that's enchanted. You are today years old when you learn the moon changed its distance to Earth. You're talking about its orbit? Not everything has a perfect, perfectly circular orbit. Most things, I would say, have an elliptical orbit. Uh, which set is my favorite so far? I think the diamond one? Or, I think this one... The amethyst one looks the best, but my favorite one, actually, I said the diamond, I think the gold one, honestly. I think the gold one is probably my favorite. Wait till you find out the moon is tidally locked to the earth, meaning we only get to see half of it. Well, that's why there's a dark side of the moon. Boop. And one of those. What? Oh, I'm switching it. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. Am I not aiming at the thing? There. Boom. Check it out. Check it out. I feel like, though, this set of armor needs to be moved over by one. I 
I feel like we're diagonally. The first one on this one should start here. Or these should be moved over by one. Um, if I move this one closer, I can't remember if this made it too close. There was some reason I had them spaced in such a way. Is that too close? No, that's fine. We just move everything over by one. I think it might have been, I wanted this in line with the center of this room, but it doesn't actually need to be. The bush boxes messes it up. I think that is fine. Perfect, perfectly reasonable amount of fully enchanted sets of netherite armor, in my opinion. Flexing how rich you are, love it. <laughs> well, eventually we're not gonna have these here on display. Check it out, these ones don't have arms. These ones do. This is something, I think it was Cub and I were looking at this the other day. So look at this. If we shift right click on this armor stand to bring up this thing, um, we can show the arms, but if we show the arms, then like the sleeves, instead of like being off to the side, they're straight up and down. And if I, whoop. And then if I hide the arms, then it's still straight up and down. It doesn't go back to this. I don't know if there is a setting to get it back to this default state. Does anybody know if there's a set for that? A setting, poses. What is blo- oh no. Attention maybe? Attention shows the arms again. That's not what I want. Why is there not like a default? There should be like a default. There's no default. Yeah, I can break the armor scene and put it back, but like, if you show the arms, it sh changes the pose, right? And that's weird. If I want the pose changed, I would change the pose. I feel like there's something, something weird. Copy pose from unchanged. That's a good idea. Can I do this? Copy. If I paste it here, what does this do? It doesn't change, it changes the position, but it doesn't change like the pose. So like it hides the arms, but the armor is still not the default. No! 247 just resubscribed for 94 months. Dang it. Guys, I hate, hate. I don't hate this. It's just annoying. Dang it! Okay, okay. No, fine. No, 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 no. It's good. I actually wanted to place it again. That's what I wanted to do, honestly. This is fun. This is, this is me having fun right now. So in the future, don't use a sweeping edge sword on these things and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Use a shovel. There we go. Who did the thing? X minus coming in with a 94 month resub. X minus. Thank you so much for the 94 months, dude. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of months. Nas just resubscribed for 22 months. So much fun. Thanks for the great <laughs> content. Yo, empty Nars. Thank you so much for the 22 months, dude. 
Armor stand placing is the bestest. Okay, so now I have a question. After I just did that, I'm not gonna mess with those anymore, but I have a question. Do you have an answer for my question? Of course you don't, because you don't even know what the question is. Let me make some more armor stands. Boom. So if I have an armor stand here, 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 and here. If I have armor stands like this, and then I sweeping edge of this one, they all go forward. Interesting. That is not what I was expecting to happen, and that is super cool, actually. Were you guys expecting that to happen? I feel like... I feel like there's almost a mini game here. I feel like there's potentially a mini game here. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. We we gotta do a little bit more testing. So if I go this way, if I'm facing this direction and do it. Underscore am underscore sweetie underscore just resubscribed for 18 months. I am sweetie. Hey, thank you so much for the 18 month resub. Yeah, so if I hit it again, it only affects the ones that have the sweeping edge. Okay, okay. So the next thing I want to know if we. Lock interaction. I can't do anything with this, but does this affect these armor stands? Please let this be a yes. Please let this be a yes. No! That would have been so cool. It would have been amazing. Wait, isn't this the one I locked? I, I actually lost track. Is this the one I had locked? Or did the one I have locked get moved? Or is this it? I actually don't know. All right, let's just. Wait, this is the one I had locked. Did it move? How did it move? Oh, wait a second. So this, this might actually still work. So I can move the one that's locked. But this one doesn't do anything. Interesting. Okay. So we still might have something going on here. So I can't destroy this armor stand. It's completely locked, right? Which means I can't sweeping edge it either, but I can move it around with sweeping edge. Only if I hit the feet? Hold on a second. I am confused. So if I sweeping edge the top, no, it still moves. That's weird. Uh, 
All right, guys, we got a brainstorm here. What fun interactive game could we make with such a thing? It might be a bug, but regardless if it's a bug or not, we can turn this into some kind of a mini game. Does the sweeping edge, is it based on like where you're positioned, not like where you're hitting? Is it because I was too far away that it didn't actually work there? So if I'm back here, But if I get really close to it and do it. Okay, so sweeping edge is based on your player. That's something I didn't actually know before. I thought it was based on the weapon. Interesting. What if you sweeping edge the ground? Well, you have to hit an entity, right? Wasn't there an armor stand game in season seven that you used with sweeping edge? Um, I know there was an armor stand one that used a fishing rod. The sweeping edge take into the account your angle. Oh, Zed. Did the golf with sweeping edge? There isn't golf one. Oh. Oh, with knockback. Oh, well, somebody's already done this, and that's gross. I had no idea this was a thing. So if I stand back here. Oh, no, I gotta be here. If I stand back here, we shouldn't sweeping edge anything. But if I get close to it. So if this one's behind me and I sweeping edge this, that doesn't get knocked back. So sweeping edge only is in front of the player. Right? So if I'm like standing on this, I sweeping edge. Oh no, it still goes forward. Interesting. I'm not really sure how this is working. <laughs> this is so weird. But I feel like you could do something, like maybe play checkers or something. Yeah, it's leapfrog. But how does leapfrog work? Zed's was knocked back, not sweeping edge. Okay. So you can move the armor stand like two blocks away, one and a half blocks away with sweeping edge. The one you hit doesn't get affected. The surrounding eight blocks are affected. So we have this as a start. That's right. Maybe a race to see which hermit can leapfrog the stands the fastest. What happens if we have sweeping edge plus knockback? Does it make him go like super far? You know what this calls for. You know what this calls for. Science. Science. Door. 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 I don't need sharpness. I will want a mending. Do we not have a Kanaka Baka? What? 
What? All right, this shop is now condemned. How do we not have Kanakabaka? Officially a dumb house. Oh, Joe might have those. Right, those might be a fantastic book. Fantastic tier books. Kanakabaka. What? What? Are these all ones? Why does this why does this say statues? What? Knockback two. Is knockback two the highest tier? It is the highest tier, right? What is uh Joe charge? All books one diamond each. Please pay in barrel. One diamond. I have questions, but um, we're gonna leave those questions unanswered. Okay, okay. Yeah, sweeping edge plus knockback. Oh, did I not grab a sweeping edge? Oh, I didn't grab a sweeping edge. Is sweeping edge also a fantastic tier book? Or is that the medium tier? There's, there's three different books. Wait, I just confused myself here. Quick charge curse. Cross walker. Multi shot. Fire aspect bane of arthropods. Knock back. Oh, uh, where do I get a sweeping edge? Chad, I need your help. I know Joe's shop and I know uh, Cleo's shop. I don't know where the other one is. Hello from China. Hello from America. Does anybody know where the other book shop is? Doesn't Joel have that permit? I have no idea. You don't think there is one? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So what that means... How did I get Sweeping Edge before then? Oh, you know what? Maybe one of these villagers Cleo has is Sweeping Edge, or maybe the Sweeping Edge villager is still at spawn. I'm gonna go check Cleo's villagers real quick. No, I got Sweeping Edge from a villager originally. Cigar underscore God just resubscribed for seven months. Hey, I hypnotized. Were you watching the chaos of this weekend? Hey, Cigar How God. How is Max doing? Thank you so much for the seven months. Uh, I did get a chance to watch some of it. I didn't watch all of it, but I did watch some of it. It looked like good times were had by all. Lots of money was raised for a good cause. I was actually wishing that I could have been a part of it. I was planning on going originally, but I was unable to go. Sharpness. Oh, 
ba -ba, infinity, huh? feather falling, mending, impaling, looting, efficiency, protection, depth, strider, respiration, curse of vanishing, huh? efficiency. Hmm. So, oh, I didn't include these before. So maybe the villager still resides at spawn, or maybe the villager was removed. Oh, Cleo did have to replace the villagers, so we might not actually have one. Ah. Uh. Mm hmm. I'll be back. Door opened. Door closed. By where they murdered? Uh, Cleo took the villagers from spawn, which were originally like Doc Corrales and mine. We all like worked on them. Everybody says they're docks, though, even though there was, like, more than one person working on them. And I don't remember why Doc decided to uh, delete the villagers, but... I guess Doc getting revenge from Cleo taking them? I'm not sure, but... Something along those lines. Doc says they're Doc? Hmm. Hmm. Even though I sat there and rolled a whole bunch of the villagers and like bred them and all this stuff, get no credit. It was community started villagers. Uh, I came back here for a book and some emeralds. I was like, what am I doing? I don't remember. Was it 13? Yeah, I'll just take a whole bunch. Is this the mod that Iskall made? This is Hermitcraft. <laughs> this is... This is the vanilla Hermitcraft server. Iskall did not make... Uh, where am I going? The vanilla server. No. Shreeping Edge. Like, yep. Door opened. Door closed. I live up to the title of Emerald Daddy. Well, I did help Cleo restock their shop a moment ago because they were completely out of mending books, which is literally unacceptable. I'm gonna make this a diamond sword, probably turn it into netherite, but I'm gonna make it a diamond sword. Because I got diamonds. Uh, so we need mending unbreaking, we need those applied. So now I guess we try with Nakabaka, Nakobako. So what happens with this? Okay, exactly what you would expect. So if I, oh, not there. If I do this and this, I need some levels. Back to the end. With the eclipse, it looks like a sunset midday. Yeah, that's that's how the eclipse looks, yeah. Uh, Ural, I do plan, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I do plan on collecting a whole bunch of emeralds before we update to the the update that breaks the raid farms. 
But I don't think that update is going to happen until, um, what, 1.21, right? Yo, Louisiana looking crazy right now. Crazy. Yeah, Louisiana's a bit closer uh, to the eclipse. I'm further away, so it's I should probably take a look outside, but it's just probably going to look a little dimmer than it normally would at this time of day. Yeah, we need to go to the end. Where you are in Florida looks normal. Yeah, I wouldn't expect with where the uh, the line of totality is that you'd see much difference here in Florida. Where you're going, where you're at, it's going to be eighty-eight point one five percent. Oh, is it going to be in 1.20.5, that change? That seems like a pretty big change to put into a point update, though, right? They're, like, changing some fundamental parts of the game. I feel like that should all be in a major release, not, like, a patch release or a minor release. I feel like that change should be made when they actually release the, um, whatever those are called, the trial things. The trial chambers, there you go. I forgot those are on the way. I was actually thinking about making a game called Hermit Trials. Another mini game. This is something I've been thinking about Door for a while. Opened. Door closed. The name can be subject to change, but that's what I was actually planning on calling it. Okay, so if we do sweeping edge plus knockback. That doesn't affect this or was I too far away from it? Wait a second here. Wait a second. Wait just one gosh darn second here. So, Sweeping Edge gets applied, but is it actually more? Hold on a second. This one says it's not locked. Wait. Okay, that's kind of a bug. It says it wasn't locked even though it was. Do I have any armor? Do I have any armor? <laughs> yeah, what I'm interested in is if the sweeping edge... Let me just grab like a... I guess I could have put my own armor on there. What I'm interested in is, is the sweeping edge affected more drastically The um, with the knockback. So currently, the way this works, if I attack this one, this one doesn't move, but all the other ones jump forward a block, right? What I'm curious is, if I do that with the knockback, do these all go the same distance? Or do they go further than this one gets affected by the knockback? 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to put like my helmet on this one. We're going to place these armor stands back. And then this one's just going to be like showing you where the center line is. That one's not going to be affected by anything. That's just to like show us like where they were and where they're going. So now if I come in here and I do this. So it looks like everything jumps forward two blocks and this one gets bumped way further, right? Let me reset this back up just to verify. So that's our center one. Then we put all these around it. Helmet on the center one. I'm going to attack it with my normal non knockback sword. Oh no, everything jumps forward two blocks regardless. Okay, so yeah, the sweeping edge is, doesn't affect anything with that. It only affects the one that we have hit. Or I'm sorry, the knockback only affects the one that we hit. The sweeping edge still does everything it does to these guys. So what does the level of sweeping edge do? If I do sweeping edge two, does that like affect fewer of these or does it make them jump forward like not as much? You know what? I guess that's right that it jumps forward too because I had one right behind me and then I had sweeping edge this and it would jump forward to here, right? So I guess that makes sense because it was always going forward two blocks. I thought they were only going forward one before. So sweeping edge level doesn't affect the range of attack. It only affects the amount of damage it does. So sweeping edge one would be the same as sweeping edge three as far as this mechanic goes, huh? Okay. So the next question I have is how far is this actually going with the, uh, the knockback? We're just going to test this a little bit because I'm just kind of curious about this mechanic. Put the helmet on this guy. Whoop. I always shift click things from my, from my inventory to my hot bar. But when you do that with armor, it like equips it. It's super annoying when you're working with armor. Okay. So if I do this with the knockback, let me put down my other dummy here for like the starting position. So the one that gets knocked back is one, two, three, four, like five ish. Okay. I'm not sure knockback does what I want to do. I'm not even sure what kind of a cool game we could make with this. Maybe like how many armor stands can you get across a line and we alternate turns? So like the goal would be to like bunch up armor stands, I guess. So like we do that, we kind of get them clustered together and then we do that. We just keep moving them forward. And now we got these guys together and we kind of like do this kind of thing. Maybe. I don't know. You create a billiard game where the locked armor stand could be the cue ball. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking. Like golf would make sense, but that's been done apparently. But yeah, like I think the locked armor stand, we were looking at that mechanic earlier where you're like, you can't actually sweeping edge it. Whoop, not that. Oh boy. Uh, get this thing back up here. So 
So yeah, anyway, we lock the interaction so then we can't do anything with it. And we're using that to like get knocked around, right? Like you're just saying. Like we were looking at that earlier. Oh, that no, that jumps the two blocks forward. Then you pick up whatever and then like you continue doing this. Can you like determine so you can only place these armor stands down on a block. Would we allow the players to be able to like move them? So we can line them up. Would we allow that? Or like you want to make a trick shot? Does that even matter? I don't know. Maybe that doesn't even matter because it's based on like the player positioning. So like if I place it over here, but I still want to go forward, if I do this, it goes whichever way I'm facing regardless of where this armor stand is. You only have to place this armor stand so it's one block away. Maybe that doesn't matter then. I don't know. I think that's gonna require a little bit of like fiddling around with and testing. It's kind of a cool mechanic that I haven't explored before. Uh, one thing we did discover though, knockback, meh, for this kind of meh. The bowling? Does that only affect living entities with the knockback or with the sweeping edge? I think it does, right? It's like mine carts. If a mine cart is not on a track or on a rail, what happens if it gets sweeping edged? What happens if I hit the minecart? It breaks the minecart and works. Okay. Uh, boats. Boats probably act the same as minecarts, I would imagine. Oh, or oh, was I too far away? Maybe I was too far away. Okay, so it works the same as a minecart. Doesn't get knocked back by itself. Can knock back armor stands. It makes the armor stand go back, but can it also move an armor stand up a block? Okay, so that's interesting. So you're talking about like... Well, that doesn't work. Maybe this would work actually. So if I place an armor stand here, but I need a sweeping edge from below, right? How would I do this? Let's see what we got here. So if I hit that, does it make this one jump upwards? It kind of hopped. Do they always hop? I think they always hop, right? It always hops. And it was here and it moves forward too. I don't think that changes it if you're doing it from below. I think they always just kind of jump forward. Now, I guess the next question would be, can you make them just go up blocks? Since they do hop, right? You could probably make them go up slabs. But can they go up a full block? Let's try some things here. So, armor stand, armor stand, sweeping edge. It can't quite go up a block, but if we put a slab there. Oh. Really? 
Really? What if I move this slab back one more block like that? Aha! Okay, armor stand parkour. Armor stand parkour. <laughs> this is so stupid. Why would anybody want to do this? Okay. All right. We got something here. We actually have something here. Two minutes to get the armor stand as far in the course as they can fall reset. Or we could do a uh, 1v1 where whoever just makes it, makes it, wins. Now, how would, like... How would brewing stands and things that have weird hitboxes work in this? So I'm on the arm or I'm on the brew stand now. Okay. So there is a mechanic in this game. I explored this a long time ago. I don't know if this still works. But armor stands on like a fence post is like one of the steepest um, single block transition height wise that you can do. So like, let's get rid of this block. I'll put a fence post here. And then... We do a fence post here. All right, brew stand, brew stand. It's kind of a wild way to go up. So if we do something like this, oh, it won't even go on the first one. Okay, so we need to have like a regular Hmm. Wonder if like we do carpet first. Something just got a little bit of height. Or actually, hold on a second, let's move this back. So if we do it here, here. Okay, so now we're on the fence post. So if I come over here and do it again, where do we end up? We're still on the fence post. Oh, oh, oh. I think the problem is there's no like next fence post. Maybe, or maybe you just can't do this. Maybe this is just dumb, but it's like the armor stand is on the brew stand, not the fence post hitbox right now. Is it just broken? Can it not get on the hitbox? Oop, and it's gone. I myself could just walk right up this, no problem. As long as I'm centered anyway. Like the craziest looking staircase. <laughs> the fence is stopping its upward momentum. Maybe it's because they're just too close, right? Let's try it one more time.
So we get to there. We had it up higher than this. Why is it not going up? I don't get it. It's not going. We had it on top of this one the first time. Is it because this... Okay, maybe it's this guy is too close. Let's try it one more time. So we can get it to there. If I place this guy here and I do it... Nope, I just leapfrogged my original guy back. Oh, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Oh, we're in a bad spot now. Okay. Well, this is silly. It doesn't actually have to be this way. We could just go back to like the more simple method. I just wanted to try this out, but I can see that this is going to be way too complex to use as like an actual mechanic. So let's not do this. Um. So if we do this, we can get it onto that slab. And then if we do this, we can get on to that one. But we can only do like two block gaps, right? And it has to be two blocks away. Otherwise, the armor stand runs into something and then it's like, I don't know what to do. So another option is we could potentially use like snow layers. I try a running start. I don't think that affects how sweeping edge works, unfortunately. So one snow layer doesn't do anything Two actually has a little bit of a hitbox. So if we do armor stand, armor stand here, can we actually get up on that or over it? We can leapfrog that. Interesting. About three layers. Three layers, it kind of hits and then bounced. But no, it'll still go over. Four layers, I think, is the same as a half slab. So just bounce. Okay, so three layers is like the maximum we can go to like clear one block gap. All right, interesting. WHTTRS just subscribe. WHTTRS? Is it Witters? Waters? Waiters? Waters, thank you so much for the subscription. Your lack of vowels disturbs me. Vowels suck, all right? Fine. It's fine. Yeah, so we were just messing with some armor stands upstairs. We made ourselves a new set of armor, right? And then I accidentally hit one and noticed that uh, my sweeping edge affected the armor stands around me. <laughs> So we've been kind of messing with them, trying to figure out what the heck is actually going on here, right? Um, there's my current armor set as it stands right now. And then we have just added a copper set. So we're getting fancier and fancier here. But yeah, for those of you who are just now joining, might not have been here since the start of the stream. Um, we have discovered, and this might be well known, but it's just as new for me. We have discovered this 
if we're using sweeping edge on an armor stand, the armor stand we're using sweeping edge on stays, but all the other surrounding ones kind of leapfrog forward. And so we're just kind of like messing with this mechanic and seeing that what we can do with it. Slime block, water hazards, ice, bubble elevator. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we could do. So that is a good question. If we do this on ice, how does that affect things? Or packed ice? So normally, if this is on regular ground, the one being affected uh, goes two blocks, but what does it do with packed ice? One, two, three, four, five blocks. Interesting. Interesting. Azuma made a standoff game in season seven out of this mechanic. It was very cool. One of your favorite Minecraft mini games. I remember there was a a fishing rod thing with armor stands. Oh, how does this work with honey? Does it work with honey? I bet it wouldn't work with honey. Let's go buy some honey blocks. Out here supporting the local hermit economy. Sure. You think X use knockback, not sweeping edge. Door. Door. These are how much? Locally sourced honey. 32 for one diamond. So that's two diamonds. The banners are good. Um... Two diamonds. Door opened. Door closed. Door closed. We love Corrales. Yeah, Corrales is one of my favorites. One of. Not my favorite. One of my favorites. Let's be clear about this. Where my armor stands go? Did I put them away? What did I do with my armor stands? What the heck? Guys, what did I do with my armor stands? I put them in the ice drawer. Oh, that was dumb. Okay, so on honey blocks, I expect not a whole lot of interesting is going to happen here, but let's see. Oh, it makes it only go one block instead of two. That is actually interesting. That is actually kind of interesting. We already tried ice. Welcome to the live stream. What would a slime block do? Will it make it bounce a little bit? Squishy. Whoops.
Oh. Wait, what? Why does it do that? It like completely negates its forward momentum. Even more than honey. Wait, what? That doesn't even make sense. How does that make sense? Why well, wouldn't it be able to jump on slime? It should be able to jump on slime. I can jump on slime. I can't jump on honey block. Is it because it's interacting with these? Let me get rid of these. No, it just can't jump. Why does it move further on honey than it does on slime? <laughs> what? It literally goes further. Honey is lower. Oh, good call. But honey makes it so you can't jump. But honey is okay. So let's look at this. If we do it on regular ground, it still goes two full blocks. I would imagine it would go two full blocks on slime, but it does not. It goes less than two blocks. There's something weird there, but it... <laughs> it goes further on the honey where you can't jump. It goes less far on slime blocks. I don't know. We did it on packed ice, and I think the armor stand went five blocks on packed. I, ha I haven't tried blue. We can, we can do them both. Put them side by side, I guess. Just for a little funsy. And then blue eyes, I probably gotta make this track bigger. I expect they go pretty far in blue. All right, so armor stand, armor stand. Do that slides a bit, so we're going one, two, well, I guess we start here. So we go one, two, three, four blocks on packed. Blue ice, surprisingly about the same. Interesting. So there's a lot of stuff here that's like, I'm not expecting. <laughs> Honey making the, ar or allowing the uh, armor stand to go further than slime block. Slime block stopping the forward momentum. And then both ice and packed, or uh, packed ice and blue ice being roughly the same distance. Like, a lot of this stuff is kind of like, huh. You're late to the stream from trying to take pictures of the eclipse. Well, hopefully your eclipse pictures turn out well. How far does it go on soul sand? That's a good question. Good question. Soul sand would be over here. Man, my uh, my storage room is starting to turn into like a mess here. <laughs> soul sand. kind of cool you can't see the base plate but you, can you oh yeah you can see it here but that's because it sinks into the honey block a little bit interesting all right so how far does it go on soul sand it goes one block a little less than a block actually a little less than a block further than it does on slime Maybe about the same as it does on honey. It's all for science of cool mini games. That's right. Or mud. Mud, huh? Mud doesn't make you go slower, does it? Uh, nethers over here. So soul sand is kind of mid. It's kind of like meh, whatever. 
try some mud. Ew, it's all squishy sounding. So these look roughly the same on here. Does it go any further or same distance? It goes further on the mud block. Mud block looks like it goes, it's, eh, this leg is right on like the center line. So it, it goes the same as it does on regular ground, I would say. A full two blocks on mud, even though this is lower than a block. You confused on what we're trying to do? Lol. Here. So, <laughs> I just showed this a minute ago. But I'll show you again since it's kind of a cool thing that you don't really think about. But if you have armor stands placed like this, and then you hit this center one right here with sweeping edge, the center one stays, but the other one's like leapfrog in front of it, right? And I thought that was kind of an interesting mechanic, so we're just kind of exploring what we can do with armor stands and potentially making a mini game out of this, right? Things that we have discovered so far, they go different distances based on the blocks that they're placed on. Honey allows an armor stand to go further than slime, which doesn't really make sense. Packed ice and blue ice is a roughly the same distance if you're trying to like do long shots or whatever. And we can make armor stands go up a slab as long as we give them one block of space before the slab. So I'm thinking we might do some kind of a parkour armor stand mini game. What's the range on sweeping edge? I think it's a three by three centered on the player, not what you are attacking. I, so like we can science this. If I'm right here, it affects that. But if I'm like right here and I hit this armor stand, it does not affect the one in front of it, right? But if I place an armor stand right here, for instance, and I attack this guy. It, well, okay, did I move? Maybe I moved a little bit further. Anyway, so like, yeah, it's three by three centered on the player. So another interesting thing that we discovered, check this out. If we take this armor stand and we lock it, we can no longer attack it. We can't break it, we can't do anything, right? However, we can still leapfrog it by attacking one next to it. So we can't interact with this guy at all, but sweeping edge will still make it move. There's a mini game here. There's definitely a mini game here, but trying to make something interesting with it is, uh, is where we're at right now. That's going to require a little bit of thought, I believe, but there's definitely something here with this. Yeah. Parkour with armor stands, right? Yep. 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 What would happen if you hit an armor stand? from a slab onto a slime block. Okay, so instead of this honey block, we swap that out with a slime block, is what you're saying? I don't, can I place it on the slab? Oh, we can, okay. It bounces a little bit. Does sprint, does like, if I critically hit this, does that make any difference? I don't think it does. So like, if I do that with a regular armor stand, oh yeah, these things just don't even move by attacking them, right?
Move the locked armor stands onto pressure plates to open the next level, similar to portal. Interesting. Now you're talking my language. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about like a maze or something like that to move the armor stands through. I was kind of thinking of a 1v1 who could move an armor stand the furthest. But yeah, I mean, I guess if the goal is to get the armor stand to the end to open to the next level, we could turn this into a single player thing. Maybe a timed one, right? The armor stand is your companion cube. No, it wouldn't be auto resettable, I don't think. But we could just say in order to start the game, place an armor stand and lock it. And then this is what you're going to do, right? It's a little bit of a setup for the player. You can dispense armor stands, but you can't dispense them locked, right? Well, actually, that's not true. That's not true at all. I think there is a way you can do that with the uh, with the book. Hold on a second. How do you make the book? You have to name a book. Is it a written book or is it a regular book you rename statues? I think it's got to be a written book. We could actually dispense it locked. I'm well, dispense it and then lock it. I th I'm pretty sure you can do this. It's a book and quill. Okay, so let me um let me grab a feather and an ink. Do you rename it or do you just title it? You just title it. Okay. Right, so Well, it's under utilities. Does this work? Copy an armor stand stores its settings and poses in the book and then can be pasted to another armor stand. The book must be selected. You mean hand locking armor stand prevents it from being changed using the book and disables interaction. So if I lock it, can I copy? This is something I don't know. We're about to find out. Uh, there's a way in here that you can like have it highlight check target. Okay, so we're on the right one. So if I go to lock, Armor stand lock. And then if I go to copy. Okay, so it changes this book, right? You saw it like flipping my hand. So this book knows what it's supposed to be. So if I get rid of this thing, whoops. Let me just get rid of my base as well. So if I place an armor stand back here, I need an item frame if I remember right. Do, 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 do. Item frame. On a block. With this book. Can you power? Actually, you might not be able to power it on a block. Let me just grab a regular block. And then this, this area is a mess. I want it cleaned up so bad. And then we power that. It should transfer that information to this. And if that's true, did it work? Uh, how do I tell if it's worked? Maybe that doesn't work. 
Maybe you can't lock it like that. Or does it, am I powering the wrong thing? Does it have to be powering the actual item frame? I actually don't know how this works. It'd probably make more sense if we did this. Check target. Let's do a pose. Running. Okay, so we did a pose. Let's copy. First of all, I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. So we'll copy. Pose and settings copy to the book. So if I place this here, we break this, we place it back, and then I power this. Got the power of the block, not the thing. Okay, so this isn't working, so it might still work with the lock. I don't know, does this have to be closer? Am I too far away? I don't know how this works. If I place that there with this here and this here, and then power it. Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Put the frame on the floor, not on the stone. Does this functionality not work? Is it not the correct version of the data pack? That might be. I thought this affected the closest armor stand when this was powered in an item frame. There might be more to this that I don't know. Item frames. Oh, this just turns the item frame on and off. It's off by default. Admin needs to turn it on. I do have the armor stand mod, Azuma. What we're trying to do is use the armor stand book to copy a pose and then paste that pose using redstone. Remember decked out last season, how the doors worked and that kind of stuff. It was done this in this manner. I can't seem to get it to work though. My chat's saying something about needing to turn it on by an admin command or something. I have no idea how this works since I never did it. I just assumed this was part of the, the data pack. I have no idea. Um, there's no statues. Was a book in your hand when you copy the pose or was it already in the item frame? I mean, it has to be in your hand in order for you to click the page that says copy, right? Like I have to be having the book in my hand while I click copy. All right, we'll try again. Maybe I did it wrong. Let's, let's try it again. I don't know. So armor stand. We'll take this book. We'll check target. This is the correct one. We'll pose adjust. Oh no, I want like a default one. So like, or a non-default one running. Okay. So now we do this. We check the target again. I'm on the right one. We copy. 
Okay, so I've copied it. Let me place it back. Let me try pasting it from the book. That's something I haven't tried yet. Paste it from the book. So pasting it works. If I break it, place it back. Check target. Paste. That seems to work. Okay, so now if I put this in an item frame, right there, armor stand, and then power this block, nothing. Let me try this, this, that, this one, nothing. We will try this, that, that, this, nothing. And one more thing, we try this and this. Nothing. So I'm... The item frame animation time needs to be set to 16 for the data pack. It's zero by default. Item frame animation time. The book and armor stand need a piece of redstone dust between them. I'm willing to bet it is a setting because it seems like this shouldn't be this difficult, right? <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to work or not, regardless. Regardless if we get the data pack working. I don't know if you can lock an armor stand, like dispense it and then lock it in such a way. So even if we do get this working, I don't I don't know for sure that this will even work. Maybe if I place this on a target block. Uh oh, Azuma just rage quit. I mean, it's obviously not working, so. Okay. What does that item frame animation time thing even do? Like, why is it not zero by default? Like, I understand setting it to zero allows this functionality, but why is it not zero by default? What does that setting actually do? So that's the amount of time that item frames can be detected and animate armor stands. Sets the amount of time that item frames can be detected and animate armor stands. Huh. Interesting. Oh, cool. This is a uh, picture that Jevin posted in our Discord. Moon. From Dayton, Ohio. Pretty cool. Pretty cool.
He posted that about 15 minutes ago-ish. I'm sure from here it just looks like the sun was a little bit dimmer. That's what it looked like there in Dallas. Man, that would have been so cool if it like was right above my, my house or whatever and I didn't have to travel like 10 hours to go see it. That's a long distance, a 10 hour drive. The longest I've ever driven in a single trip was 13 and a half hours. Pretty sure. And that was from Missoula, Montana to Las Vegas, Nevada, hitting gas stations only to fuel up and keep going, no brakes. Like, go, go, go. Never do that long of a drive again. <laughs> that was a very, very, very long and grueling drive. Wait a second here. I thought I'd... Oh, maybe I was like... Okay. I thought I, like, made it bounce with, like, a crit hit or something? I don't know. Do I have access to slash function? No. I don't have op on the server. I'm not an operator. I used to have access to that stuff and then I stopped playing on the vanilla for a while. I was doing a lot of modded. And during that time, access got taken away from me. And that's fine. I don't actually need access to it. But uh, I used to have it a long, long time ago. Just don't have it anymore. Like way back in the day during season one, uh, our server had some issues where like it, um, we had chunk errors and like corrupting things happening. Like the data center that, or I, the server, I guess I should say not really data center, that was hosting our Hermitcraft season one originally, like the first couple of weeks or months or whatever. Uh, we had a hard drive failure or something and we lost the world and then like something else happened and like I was like enough is enough So I got access to the server and I started downloading it like doing nightly off-site backups to my own PC <laughs> So I had like access way back in the day, but yeah, like over the years not really as needed as much so I don't have it Ye olden times yeah, yeah uh armor stands so yeah these are some cool mechanics definitely something to think about as far as like a mini game goes there's definitely potential here so like doing a maze doing like a portal kind of a thing get the armor stand from one section to the other to open the level if we can do that, and we can also dispense armor stands and lock them with the book so they can't be messed with, we will have gameplay functionality. So that's something that we're going to have to figure out. I'm sure it's something that I can uh, convince Azuma to do. If it is simply changing that one setting, that'll get the ball rolling, but I'll still actually have to like figure out... Oh, I did have some hunting blocks here. I will still have to figure out the game, the layout, and all this kind of stuff, so... Uh, it's interesting. Definitely wasn't expecting to, like, find a new mechanic that might be fun for a mini game today, but here we are. Here we are. Uh, statues, I guess I'll put in here. Rest and torch. Definitely a survey setting. You were doing it right. You checked how Impulse did it last season and you were doing it the same. I see, I see. Rookie numbers, LA to St. Louis, 29.5. But did you do that in one sitting? I think 29 and a half hours. 
that would probably be a three day drive. 13 hours was pushing it for a single day. You did it with no stops. Now that's dangerous. But you're right. I bow down to the master. That's like way over twice as long. You drove from Syracuse to Tampa, 27 hours straight shot, no sleep. These are the people that we have to deal with driving around. Goodness, everybody. Goodness. I have some stories that I would tell you where you'd be like, goodness, Hypno. But I will not tell you guys these stories. <laughs> Let's just say I have done some less than favorable things when it comes to driving in my past as well. Um, but yeah, we don't need to discuss those. I was actually a little reckless when I was younger. Uh, when I first started driving, uh, <laughs> I, I got a lot of tickets. Like, I know there's some people that are like proud that they've never gotten a ticket before. I've gotten some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a little unruly when it came to driving. I actually did get a drag racing uh, citation. I did. I believe the citation said something like holding a speed contest without written or verbal approval or something like that is what was actually written on the citation. <laughs> You got like nine in your first three years of driving. Now we know the real reason why you live in so many states. Yes, guys, you found me out. I'm on the run. Don't tell anybody where I live. Oh, no. <laughs> you've never gotten a ticket. You've been pulled over five times and warned. Maybe you're too innocent. Yeah, there's times where I got a ticket where I don't feel I should have, and then there's plenty of times where I didn't get a ticket where I feel like I should have. So, a win-win, but uh, lessons learned, and I don't do those things anymore. In fact, I rarely drive. Guys, I bought the car that I currently have right now, a 2015 Acura TLX. I bought it brand new in 2015. Maybe I bought it in 2014. I can't remember. But it was brand new. Like, it it was the first of its kind, first of that model, whatever. They changed it from the TL to the TLX that year. And I was like, I got it. It's mine. I want it. I ordered it. Picked the colors. Picked the options. Bought a brand new car. Dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. Don't ever buy a brand new car. Buy a used one. Save yourself some money. But, point is, moral of the story, I bought that car 2015. It has like 11,000 miles on it right now. I don't drive very much. I'm the little old lady that goes to the grocery store. I don't drive. That car was like, I don't remember, like $45,000. Maybe, maybe a little less than that. I don't remember. It was over $40,000. I had put 11,000 miles on it. I've had the car... Nearly 10 years. Hypno's an actual hermit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been... Okay, so here's the deal. I got that car because my mom kept complaining that the current car that I had before I bought it was going to, like, fail on me. The car that I had before this Acura TLX was an Acura Integra. A 1995 Acura Integra. GSR. I had, like... The catback exhaust and the four into one stainless steel DC sports header and the KNN short air ram intake, uh, all this stuff. Like I was into sport compact cars during this point in my life, right? I thought it was the coolest thing ever. My car wasn't like flashy. It was red, but it wasn't flashy. It had like the exhaust or whatever. And when I stomped on it, it sounded impressive. Um... But anyway, like I bought that car 
Oh gosh, when did I buy that car? I bought that car, I think in 2001, and I had it until I bought the other car in 2015. So like I had my Acura Integra for like 15 years, and when I bought it, it was already like a number of years old. Anyway, my mom was concerned that the car was going to break down, and she's like, you should get yourself a new car. It's like, fine. So I literally got myself a new car. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't even make sense. Like I should not have bought that car, but I was convinced at that time that I wanted to get myself a brand new car and buy it with cash. I didn't take out a loan. I literally had the money saved up and I slapped it on the table and was like, give me the car. <laughs> this is back when I was still working my normal uh, nine to five job and doing YouTube on the side. Like all the money from my normal job just going right in my bank account. YouTube was paying for my monthly expenses. So I had a lot of extra money. Why you change that supercar now is sold for fortune? I mean, it wasn't a supercar. It's basically a slightly better Honda Civic. Smiley Lich just resubscribed for 95 months. Smile. Smiley Lich, hey, thanks so much for the 95 month resub, dude. Thanks for the tier three support as well. That is, I think that's the second 95 month one. No, we had a 94 month earlier. Yeah, X minus only the 94 months. Imagine only being subscribed for 94 and not 95 months. X minus. I'm just kidding, dude. If you're if you're still here, I'm just kidding. What is more amazing, a once in a lifetime eclipse or how little Hypno drives this car? <laughs> <laughs> it's the eclipse is only once in a lifetime if like you never leave your house and you're within the path of totality right like you can go see there's gonna be another eclipse in in florida for instance what i say in 2040 what was it i don't even remember now You made it to a stream and you have been hypnotized. Well, welcome. 2045. Too overcast where you are now. Too bad because you have sheed 14 glasses. I don't know what that means. Is that like how dark your glasses are? Is that on a, some kind of like a uh, sunglass darkened scale and you have 14? I don't know what that means. There's a solar eclipse every 18 months somewhere in the world. That makes more sense. Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime for it to go over your particular house. Or maybe within like a 30 minute drive of it. But it's not a one in a lifetime event. Now, you want to talk about a one in a lifetime event. How about seeing what, what what's that one comet like Haley's Comet that comes by every 80 years or something like that? I think if I remember correctly, that comet... We're just, by the way, we're just chatting. Somehow we went from playing Minecraft to just chatting. I think that comet, I saw it in like the late 80s. I think. Right? Didn't it come? Oh, wait, was it? Oh, maybe I didn't see it. I thought it was like, I thought I saw it when I was young, but if it happened in 1980, that was before I was even born. So like, I'm old, but that was before I was born. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. Um, let me actually look real quick. Let me look this up. Haley's Comet. Uh, here, Wikipedia. Every 75 to 79 years, so it's like 80 years-ish. Uh, in a parts of the solar system in 1986. So actually, I was born when it was, but I was so young, like, I don't really remember it. Will I be alive in 61? Hopefully. You remember seeing it in 86?
That's a one in a lifetime thing. Kind of going on a little tangent. <laughs> you might have remembered Hail Bop in 97. Uh Oh, was that the one? Is that the thing that like hit Mars or someone one of the planets or something? I don't remember. I thought it was called something else. Maybe you're talking about something else than what I'm thinking of. A very good feel. You've repeated that comment like, I don't know, four or five times now. I've read it. I understand. I haven't responded, but I've seen it. I'm glad you feel that way, though. I don't know if we're actually going to name them. Oh, Shoemaker Levy. That's what I was thinking of. So what's Hail Bob? What what is that one? Is that just another um Oh, I hit Jupiter, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, what's Hail Bob? It's a fail follow-up to Mbop by Hanson. Oh. Oh, that makes sense. NASA footage of the eclipse was pretty cool. Yeah, I'll probably go back and check it out. But I've seen eclipse footage before. I'm sure it's going to be nothing different, <laughs> honestly. Like, once you've seen one eclipse, you've seen them all. Unless you, unless you see them in real life, then it's different. But again, it was like a 10-hour drive for me to go see one, so... Wait, what? Hypno has a mother? I thought you just spawned in your bed. You saw Hail Bob for sure. It was in the night sky for weeks and almost visible from everywhere at some point. Well, okay. Let me clarify. I have seen comets in the night sky before. <laughs> I have seen comets in the night sky before. I thought I remember seeing um, Haley's Comet. And I might have since I was alive during that time. But I was so young, there's no way I could remember that particular one. Aliens? Don't drink Kool-Aid when looking at a comet? From what state you are hypnome? I live currently in Florida. I was born in California, the complete opposite side from where I'm currently living. Interesting. Yeah, I know there's been a few different, I know there's been a few comets around since um, I've been alive, so. I don't know. There was so much hype about Hail Bob on TV and newspaper everywhere. And yeah, so much hype and I don't even remember the name. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I guess. Kind of funny. Made you look up Hail Bob. 2,500 plus year orbit will be back in the solar system in 4385. Goodness. Yeah, the, the whole like how big space is is just mind blowing. Like, I try and think about it. <laughs> I try and think about how vast the space is like moon is the closest thing to us. Right. And it just takes so long to get to the moon. Like if you think about like, if you were going to drive there, it would like, how far away is the moon? Let, let's take a look at this. Earth to moon distance. How? So that is 200 
and 38.9, 238,000 miles, almost 239,000 miles. Okay, so if you were to drive there, let, let's put this into perspective. I drove from Montana to Las Vegas, and that was 1,000 miles, and it took me 13 hours. So that's like one day of driving. So we're talking 238 days of driving like that if you were going to drive to the moon, should that be a physical place you could drive to, right? That is so far away. Moon pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it without sleep. That's near, that's like, that's months of driving if you could theoretically drive there, which you can't, but like, should you be able to? So far away. Like, how far is it to like, what's our closest planet? Is it Venus or is it Mars? Venus is 25 million miles away. <laughs> it's basically next door. Uh, wait. Distance. So, from Earth to Mars is 140 million miles. A hundred and forty million miles. One hundred and forty million miles. That is so far. So, okay, so we remove a zero, we can drive a thousand miles per day. <laughs> so what, that's 14 million days? Divided by 365. Oop. That would take you 38,356 years if you are driving by car, if that's theoretically even possible, right? Like the distance between just our neighboring closest planet is so far away. Like these distances, and then you're not even talking about outside of our, our close solar system, right? You, we're not even talking about like going to the next galaxy or how big the Milky Way is or any of that stuff. Like this is literally our closest planet. Like these distances just get so enormous. Like it is just like, you can't even really think about it. I, I don't know. Like I have a hard time trying to think about it in my own head. <laughs> you can floor it and get there <laughs> faster. Uh, you need a rocket car. Space is very, very empty. Our planet's like dust particles in a big void. You're not wrong. That's really how it is. In the year 4385, internet archaeologists will dig your videos. Maybe. Imagine if we could warp around space and explore. I mean, that's complete science fiction. At this point, maybe it'll be science fact at some point in the future. Probably not in my lifetime, though, sadly. But that, like, if, imagine if you could be like Star Trek or whatever, go through a wormhole. Do they have wormholes in Star Trek? I'm sure they do, right? Anyway, they have the warp engines. Imagine being able to just, like, <laughs> go faster than the speed of light and get somewhere. But, like, think about how speed of light, like a light year away. That's how fast light goes for one year. And there's like galaxies that are like, what, thousands, hundreds of thousands of light years away. Like you can't even fathom that sort of distance. That is just so far.
The expected mileage of a 10-year-old car is roughly 120,000 miles. Right. Oh, yeah. We didn't even take into consideration how long it would take to drive to Mars with uh, stopping for oil changes and, and regular maintenance and tire rotations and stuff, right? <laughs> you got to factor those in. And gas. You want to know something that'll really blow your mind about space? It's not even the vast distances. Time dilation. Time dilation is something that, like, I can't wrap my brain around. Gravity affects the speed of time. So, like, you're going into a black hole, for instance, hypothetically, right? And you're falling to your doom. But, like, as you're doing that, that event is happening for people, like, on Earth. For They see that happening to you over the course of, like, thousands of years or whatever. I, I don't know what the actual numbers are. But, like, you slow down so much compared to, like, people not affected by that. Yeah, interstellar, exactly. The movie Interstellar, like, puts that into perspective a little bit. But, like, just trying to think about if you were to travel at the speed of light, like, everybody that you know that's still on Earth while you're going the speed of light is just, like, aging. For you, it's a split second. For everybody else back on Earth, it's been, like, years. Like, that kind of stuff just blows my mind. That's just so hard to, like, think about and actually grasp that concept. The reason time dilation is a thing is because anything with mass can't go the speed of light. Black holes accelerate you to the speed of light so the laws of physics slows down, prevents you from going the speed of light. Theoretically, if you went the full speed of light, time stops for you somehow. You saw this documentary, Event Horizon, and yeah, you don't think we should mess with it. I literally just watched Event Horizon again, like, last week. <laughs> A documentary. <laughs> Is this a podcast? I mean... I honestly don't have anything I want to do in the game right at this exact minute. And, like, just chatting with you guys is fun. The other thing that I was planning on doing was maybe, um... Oops. Door open. Uh -oh. Door closed. The other thing I was actually planning on doing was moving some villagers. Over by the raid farm. Let's actually go over there real quick. Because I might set up, like, a villager breeder. I'm not sure if we're actually going to do that right now. Let's just actually... Can I say actually more times? Let's head over there and take a look. Because I did raid a few of the villages originally when I set up the raid farm. But I might want to set up a villager breeder over there for some villager trading later on in the season. How do you win this game? The only winning move is to not play. Space is so interesting and so hard to grasp at the same time. Yeah. I think in maybe another life, I probably could have been a spaceologist because I definitely find the concepts interesting. Where am I going? This way. 
<laughs> War Games. Is there any villagers left here? I think I raided all of the villagers here. Oh, we got this guy. We got this guy. He's still around. Did I just pick up an egg? Guys, I have heard if you take an egg and throw it at a chicken, you're guaranteed a baby chicken. Oh, I missed the chicken. I missed it. It would... I hear another chicken. You got an egg for me? Dang it. I missed it. Oh, there's an egg right there. Okay, let's try it again. If you throw an egg at a chicken, you are guaranteed a baby chicken. As long as you hit it. Except for that time. That time it doesn't work. But when it does work, it's 100% of the time it works. All right. So there's like three villages over here. I don't remember where the other ones are. There's one way over there. I thought maybe it's like behind this mountain here. Oh, you heard you had to throw it at a golem. Does that actually upset the golem when you do that? I imagine it probably would, even though it does no damage. You throw a snowball at a golem, the golem's like, what did you just do? Smack, you're dead. Does this village have any villagers? Ooh, there's a villager and this guy. Is there any chickens? I want to test this theory. There's a chicken egg. What up, golem? What you got? What you got? I'm sorry! I don't have my rockets. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! We can talk about this, right? Look, I'll make you rust. You want to come over here? I will make you rust? Yeah, you won't even know what's going on. What up? What up? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, you don't even know how to get in water. You're like, I can't even go through this. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what I thought, punk. Okay, so I can never go back to that village again because that, that guy will kill me. And does this village have any... This village actually does have villagers. Okay. It looks like somebody was here. But I probably don't want to take all of the villagers. Sus. Alright. Alright. All right. All right. I think this was the last village I actually uh, took a village, a villager from. Is there a chest here? It's probably buried if there is one. So anyway, uh, I want to grab some of these villagers at some point. We might do this on the next stream. Grab those villagers, make some kind of a villager breeder. And then potentially set up like a trading hall area and just kind of like store the villagers in until a future date. But yeah, I kind of want to turn this area into like my um, industrial area. In Minecraft, the chicken has to come first, right? Otherwise, you'd have no eggs. That's a horse I saw. I was like, what even is that? We also have to deal with this at some point. We also have to deal with that guy at some point. What happened to my backyard villagers? Nothing. But they're not going to stay there. I probably should get rid of them, honestly. Maybe call them down to just two in case I ever need to replenish villagers around the base. I 
I really wish the skulk sensors worked. Is there a way? Hmm. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some skulk sensor science. Skulk sensor science. Is the shulker, is this shulker right there? What is making that sound? Oh, it is. Interesting. Okay, well, anyway. What frequencies do we have here? I know. Let's uh, waterlog it so it stops making sound. How about that, first of all? Does that sound good? Can we do that? Great. Shut up. Okay. Walking, not sneaking, climbing, jumping, crawling, landing, using an item. A player gliding with an elytra or a mob performing a unique action, such as a ravager roaring, a wolf shaking, etc. Oh, interesting. So if you set up for number four, you could have announcements of when it's actually raining with a wolf shaking, right? If a wolf is outside and it's raining, does it constantly like shake like it's getting out of water? I think it does, right? Dismounting a mob or equipment, a piece of gear, equipping a piece of gear, mounting a mob or interacting with a mob, as in trading with a villager. I think that's how um, Doc blew Cleo's villagers up, if I remember correctly. A mob or player taking damage, eating a food item, a block deactivating, a block activating, opening a door, chest, pressing a button, etc. So this, number 10, this is kind of what I'm interested in. This is what we're using for our door opening sound. But what I want to know, let's uh, do this real quick. So lectern with levels, we need a comparator, a comparator. And then I need like a solid block. One solid block, please. Let me grab a solid block from uh, where my solid blocks are. What's that? So we need to do that. Waterlog this. That way I can put a comparator signal into it while it's waterlogged. And this needs to be on 10. Okay, so this should only ever activate now. Oh, is the shulker, is the shulker setting this off? Okay, well, we're gonna do this outside then. I'm gonna have to move that shulker. That thing has been a menace. Literally a menace. Let's grab a new block. Actually, I should grab this too. Yeah, I want to have a way to like... Door opened, door closed. I wanted to use this right here, a mob or player teleporting, but number 14 appears broken with anything to do with a player being detected on channel 14. I want to use that. 
for detecting a player coming through the portal. Let me sleep. Held message for reason, race, ethnicity, eth ethnicity, or religion. Allow it will post to chat. I don't think there's anything bad about this message. I don't know why that was held by Automod. Maybe that's part of a racist word or something. Hopefully not. I don't think it is, though. Did you know that a million seconds is 12 days, a billion seconds is 31 years? I did not know that. Stop it. <clears throat> All right, so we want to pump in number 10 into this thing. So this should only activate when a block activates. So, uh, a block activating would be like a chest being open like this. Let me actually put a no block. Oh, does that not send a redstone signal through? Do I need like a repeater? I can't tell if it's actually doing anything or not. That's on 10. 10 is block activating, opening a door or chest, pressing a button. I might need, with this particular thing, I might need to like get a repeater out signal out of it. I'm not sure. I mean, I can see a thing coming over that maybe it has to be a comparator out. Maybe it's just a weak signal. Yeah, comparator works. Right, right. And then this. So opening this, opening this, yeah. That's how I expect that to work. Now, what my question is, if I put string and I walk on string, does that do that same thing? No. A block changing, adding food to campfire, etc. This is number 11. I'm kind of curious if there's any one of these that will detect this. 13. 14. Fifteen is a mob or a player dying or an explosion happening. Definitely shouldn't trigger with them. Let's try deactivating nine. Eight is eating a food item. Mobber player taking damage, number seven, so it shouldn't do anything here. Uh, mounting or dismounting or trading with the villagers, number six. I was really hoping that that string, like you can get it to change state and detect it with a, uh, a thing. I was hoping that this would be able to be detected by a skulk sensor. So what do we have this on? Number five is mounting, dismounting a mob or equipping a piece of gear. Number four is a player gliding with an elytra. Did I change it to number four? Oh, I didn't. Is it only when I land? No. Okay. 
Okay, so it is detecting that fine. But not this, huh? Using an item, number three, using an item, casting a fishing pole, throwing a snowball, drinking a potion, drinking milk, etc. Number two is landing. And number one's walking, so that's not gonna work because that's like, even if I walk over it, it'll go off, so. Yo, know, string doesn't make a sound, you're right. Wait, did that detect like an item landing? No, oh, it did. Okay, so string, what I was thinking of is not going to work. Pressure plates would work, yes. What about walking but with wool around so it only detects walking on the portal frame? Okay, so here's the problem. If we were to surround this skulk sensor with wool, this guy, this calibrated one that we're using can detect 16 blocks away, right? Oh, that's interesting. It detects me going down. I would have expected that to only work on like a full block. But... Okay, now I'm curious. Does it work with like a piece of carpet? Do I have anything? I have a redstone. I guess I can just walk off this one. This is changing distance, right? Interesting. Interesting. And if I'm sneaking, does it still detect it? Probably not, right? So any sort of like a Y level change, not, not necessarily like landing. Okay, interesting. I think pressure plates are like the only solution, unfortunately. What I want is to be able to detect if a player has come through the nether portal, but I don't want it to be affected if a zombie piglin comes through because they just spawn randomly. Is this spoilers? I don't think I've seen this yet. Not spoilers. Why did that just go off? I'm hearing something walking. Oh, did he go off from these villagers? Maybe there's like a bat or something. I don't know. Anyway, so what I want to have happen is for it to detect players only, which is doable using a skulk sensor and like one of these things. Uh, the, the shrieker. Because a shrieker only goes off if it's a player thing, and then you could detect that through an observer, right? Like, it just makes it so much more complicated. It makes it so much more complicated. I just wish that the channel number 14 just worked <laughs> like it's supposed to work. And then I don't have to go through all this other stuff because if I'm gonna use pressure plates, pressure plates are the only way I can detect a player coming through by the pressure plate being clicked without them being able to like come through and then sneak past them or whatever. They have to hit them, right? But then you got those clicking sounds and then I have to use a shrieker and it's just like a lot of extra things that I have to do in order to make that work. Um, surround with campfires under carpets. Maybe that's what do for zombies.
Could use fence gates at the portal. Zombie pigmen won't use it, but a player would. So uh, we'll leave this out here. I gotta clean this up. Door opened. Door closed. So I have the portal room free. When zombie pigmen come through, they're immediately attracted around the corner here. To Door this uh, turtle egg, right? But they fall through these trap doors onto these wither roses and we dispose of them. That way we don't have to hear the zombie piglins making sounds. So there's really no obstruction here. Like I could put fence gates here, I suppose. And provided that I remember to close them every time, we could do something like that. But I prefer having the openness that we have in this room now. You seem to recall there's a way to use a puffer fish to detect a player. Like the puffer fish needs to be a block above a pressure plate or something when it expands, but you haven't done it. Yeah, I remember uh, puffer fish sensors used to be really popular. Problem is, puffer fish also work with other mobs come by them. It's not just players. So, like, if a zombie piglin spawns and walks, it would still puff up the puffer fish. Tripwire would work, but again, if a zombie piglin spawns, it would trip it. And then we have to look at the tripwire. Like, if it was just string, like, if what I was thinking would work, worked, we could just do that. And that's really not that big of a deal. But with trip wires, you actually have to have it like connected to something. And then like, I think the, the string looks a little different when it's on a trip wire. Then also clicks every time. Yeah, redstone aura reacts to mobs. I've been in caves before and seen like spots light up from mobs walking on redstone ore. Turn off the portal when you're not using it. Nobody can come through. If only it worked that way. If you turn off the portal and somebody comes through or attempts to come through, one of two things is either going to happen. They're going to end up in the mail system down below at Y0 and screw something up down there, or it's going to spawn a new portal randomly somewhere around here, potentially destroying blocks in the process. That's not something you want to do. Oh, redstone or under carpet by the quartz entry. Piglins won't trip it because they go towards the egg. Um, thing is, I am not entirely certain that a zombie piglin that spawns as soon as it spawns immediately goes for the egg. Or if it'll wander around for like 10, 20 seconds before it gets detected and starts going towards it. Yeah, they won't go far enough to trip it, maybe. That that maybe is a thing, though. There we go. We hire a hermit to be on guard and only allow players through. Raise the portal one block and put stairs around. Use a level chain. Oh, okay. That's a good uh, thought. Let's see if that thing outside detects stairs. If that is... Like, we... Well, I guess we saw if we went off a slab, it worked, right? So it should work on stairs just the same, but... Let's find out. Okay, no, no, no. Here's the problem, though. This is negated, regardless of what we do, that's negated by a player sneaking. Right? What I want to do is have this set up where no matter what, if I have these announcements turned on, there is literally no way that a player can get to me without being some sort of alert going off, right? Door opened. Door closed. So we saw it just like simply walking on this and walking off it sets that off. So like a stair should the same way.
But if I'm on this, then I'm sneaking. That's the problem. Observers can detect string without sound, but observers can't detect if it is a player or a mob. Why not use an iron golem? I don't know. Why not use an ender dragon? They pretty much wait a second or two inside the portal and then they go straight to the egg. Make it so you have to throw an item through the portal to enter the base. Other than, no, it's not the fact that I'm worried that a player is going to come through to harm me. It's more about that I just want my base to be able to detect when a player comes through. I'm not paranoid. It's not like I don't want other hermits in my base, but I don't want other hermits trying to sneak up on me while I'm in my base. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> I'm not afraid of the hermits. I just think it'd be super cool to be able to announce when a player arrives. Yeah, just making a smart house. Exactly. Exactly. And if there's flaws with it, then like it doesn't really work and there's no point even working on it. You know what I mean? So. Just don't have a problem, portal. Or don't have a portal problem solved. It makes sense since somebody liked to prank with invincibil invisibility. All right, let's get rid of this. Anyway, this is where I'm at right now with like the home security thing. I can't really make it work the way I want it to work at this point in time, which kind of sucks. I really would like to have it fully done. I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to come up with like some way to make it work, but sadly, we're kind of in the same spot where I left it off the last time. Oh, I didn't put this scope sensor away. And I didn't put the note block away! Oh, I hate it. And I did I hate it. Can I make sure I have everything on my inventory? We good? This lever doesn't go in there. Anything else going here? I'm clicking on everything. Okay, I think we're fine this time. Goodness. It's crazy there are no entity detecting mods. Can Door an armor opened. stand be used in Door any way? Closed. I don't know how an armor stand would be used. Yeah, I mean, that would be the only way is to put gates there. And uh, since we, like, rearranged the way the, the room is, I kind of don't want fence gates. You can use a cat for player detection. All right, Spencer can't win. I want you to explain in a hundred words or less how I can use a cat to detect another player entering my base. Pufferfish do not differentiate between a player or another mob. That's not what I asked you, Spencer. I asked you to tell me in a hundred words or less how I can use a cat to detect another player. Yeah, I mean, basically what we're at is exactly that, Waldorf, is trying to make some kind of Rube Goldberg device to like detect when a player comes through and it's just like ridiculous at this point. 
What's the problem with the calibrated skulk sensor? The calibrated skulk sensor really doesn't detect any sort of player teleportation. I just cleaned this all up, but let's do, let's, let's do another thing here. And a boop. It says it does, but it doesn't. This is correct. Door opened. Door closed. I didn't grab the book. All right. Did I? I left on the ground downstairs. Gosh darn it. Gee Door dang it. Opened. Door closed. What are they coming back here for? Lectern? <clears throat> the problem is players can sneak and Door completely avoid opened. it. Door closed. We don't want players to be able to like circumvent the security, right? Otherwise, what's the point of the security? Number 14 is player teleportation. So, Ender Pearl. Nothing. Chorus fruit. Chorus fruit works. Weird. But I'm not going to use chorus fruit to get into my base because that's silly. Um, I also had this set up next to another portal before and I don't think this worked. Zombie Cleo raided my stream with 1092 viewers. That's some viewers. Hello, everybody from Cleo side of things. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hope you had a good stream, Cleo. We're just out here kind of like messing around with some skulk sensors, trying to uh, uncover the mystery of them. Channel number 14, you are tired and they're being too nice. Oh, they're being too nice. You're like, get out of here. Can't deal with your niceness. You broke Cleo's stream deck? Oh. <laughs> Hello, Riff Raff. How's Max? He's cute and fluffy as always. Uh, welcome to the not as insanely regulated chat. Yes, that is true. Good night, Cleo. I can't even use my hip blee lee lee emote in Cleo's stream because I get timed out for it. Unless I put a lot of other text <laughs> along with it. It's like, nope, caps, can't, nope. Get wrecked. We don't have that stuff here. But if you uh, spam, you will get timed out and or banned, depending on what you're spamming. So uh, just be nice, right? Anyway, so we're messing with calibrated skulk sensors here. This is player teleportation. Ender pearls do not work with it. And it seems like nether portals don't work with this either. Um, caps make you feel bad, but this emo Cleo. This emote should make you feel good, but I can't do that emote. <laughs> it's shouting. That's fine. You know, you, I, I'm not going to judge you for regulating, regulating your chat the way you regulate it. Regulators mount up. That's an old song. Chorus for it works. 
but I'm not going to try and use coarse fruit. Caps lock is cruise control for cool. Let's actually bring this upstairs. Oh no, this is player teleporting. I was going to try and like throw something through another portal. This won't work. So like, it doesn't detect player teleporting going through another portal. It doesn't detect player teleporting using ender pearl. Um, it doesn't detect player teleporting. I'm pretty sure from dying and respawning. I think I tried coming back through the end and it didn't work. I'm ag we could we can test that. I don't think I actually Door tested that. Opened. Door closed. We need to do two things here. I need to come back from the end. I don't remember if I spawn exactly at zero 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 without a bed. Or zero zero. It'd be zero zero like eighty, I think. <laughs> Let's go to the end real quick. We're gonna go through that portal, come through. I wanna see if maybe we can detect players arriving at spawn. I don't think I actually tried that before. But again, this isn't going to help me with player warping through another portal. Even if this does work, but I'm just kind of curious to see this work now. So what does work? It's a good question. Oh, I failed. Okay, so where am I at? I'm at two minus two. Let's set a thing up here. I'm just kind of curious if like this will get detected. Uh, we need oh, number 14 on the selector. And we go into calibrate skulk sensor into one of these into no blocks. So we can hear the ding. So we do this. We hear the ding. Let's uh, go back to the end, come back through and see if it like detects that. I don't think it will. Door open. But it might, because that is slightly Door different closed. than coming through another portal, like warping back to world spawn. Maybe we could have like a message play for people as like, huh, somebody forgot to set their bed, or I don't know, maybe something silly like that. Yeah, there is a bug that was already made about this. And I have brought it to Mojang's attention in our Hermitcraft Discord where some of the developers are, uh, we communicate with them. Is it actually gonna get fixed because I like asked about it and asked if they could look at it? I don't know, it'd be super cool if it did though. But let's see, will I make it this time? Woo, I'm gonna fail, Ah. Yeah, I come back here and it didn't gong. Where am I at now? I'm at nine, six. So there's a little bit of variance. Another thing I don't understand. Another thing I don't understand. I need to ask Azuma about this, but a while ago, Azuma set up over here where the spawn chunks are going to be. And I don't know why the spawn chunks are not here. <laughs> Like they are still at like basically zero zero is world spawn, which is like right in front of my house. But like they're supposed to be over here. So like when new players arrive or you come back from the end, you're supposed to be like in this area. I don't know why that's not changed yet. I think there's some reason. You don't think you need a comparator to take signals from Skulk sensor. I covered up the lava pool. Yep. Door opened. Door closed. The reason why that lava pool is covered up is because within the first couple of days of the server, hermits came over there and took all the lava and then obsidianized some of it. And there was some cobblestone there and it, it looked awful. It looked awful. So I was like, you know what? If this is how the hermits are going to leave it, let's just make it look nice. I got rid of the surface stone, replaced it all with grass, filled it in. It's technically still there. You just can't see it anymore. But all the lava was already removed from it anyway, so. What else do I need to put in here before I close this up? I think we get it all this time. I need to put lecterns away and this book away. All right. 
We did the thing with the stuff. Let's go, everybody. You, they have the stuff enabled from the snapshot. Uh, we have everything enabled except for the ability for structures to be made. So we don't have the trial chambers or whatever, but we do have like the blocks. Obsidianize, your new favorite word. <laughs> okay, guys. We get repeat questions again. A lot of new viewers from Cleo's stream. Let's go over what's going on here. So we come upstairs and we want the portal here. Okay. So the number one thing that we want to have happen with a nether portal is we don't want zombified piglins hanging out, making sound, wandering around the base. So in order to avoid that from happening, if we put like a fence gate right here, they'll just stand in the portal and just be there and for like forever until they despawn as long as the player's not close enough. Um, so if we put fence gates here, they're just gonna hang out. So we have this open so they can wander around over here around the corner. We have a turtle egg right there that they detect and they wanna go over and stomp on because zombies and turtle eggs don't go together. So they detect that, they come over here, they will fall through these trap doors, they die in these wither roses, right? So we dispose of any zombified piglins like that. Um, so I don't want a fence gate right there. Now we could put fence gates right here, but that might make this look uglier than it needs to. Hey Hypno, do you know what happened to Slip? Uh, he left Hermitcraft to play Ark and then left Ark to go sail the seven seas, I think. I think he's still sailing and doing stuff on a boat, I guess. I don't know. You should probably go check out his YouTube channel. I'm sure he's uploading there about his adventures. Firehawk 894 just resubscribed for 38 months. Wait a second. Who said you could do a stream? <laughs> Firehawk, thank you so much for the 38 months. Uh, no, they don't need line of sight to the egg. As long as they can pathfind to the egg, and as long as there is two air blocks above the egg so they can, like, step on it or whatever, then they will go towards it as long as within their detection range. Yeah. Where do the calibrated skulk sensors come in? So what I wanted to have happen is if we look at the the Minecraft wiki page for calibrated skulk sensors, we can set a skulk sensor to channel 14, and this will detect a mob or player teleporting or spawning, is what the description of that channel is, right? So teleporting is a player moving from one location to another instantaneously through the TP command, going through another portal. In fact, if we go back to the wiki, and we, uh, actually, was it here? Yeah, teleporting, right here. Let's go to the teleporting page. Teleportation is a form of teleportation <laughs> in which a moving object is instantaneously moved to its target location. Player teleportation, throwing an ender pearl does not work. Eating a chorus fruit does work on channel 14. Using a teleport command, passing through another portal, end portal, exit portal, or end gateway. Entering a bed is considered teleporting. Uh, you can also teleport by like right clicking on a minecart, entering a minecart, anything that like moves a player character. So like a bed, uh, mounting a horse, mule, donkey, llama, being on a boat, dying and respawning is also considered that. So we went to the end and we warped back to spawn. That did not trigger it. In my testing before, I've tried going through another portal that didn't trigger it. Um, I don't remember if I tried a bed. I think I did try a boat and that worked, if I remember correctly. But like half the things on that list just don't work. Teleportation is a type of teleportation. I know, right? Anyway, it's currently a bug in the game. So what I want to have happen is just a skulk sensor detecting player teleportation right here. 
right? A player comes to the nether portal and then we'll have an announcement. Player arrived, player teleported. I don't know, something like that. But currently it can't do that. Now there's other workarounds that we've been discussing this for like the last hour, using like trip wires and using redstone blocks and this and that and puffer fish and the other thing, right? Like there's a lot of ways we can detect it, but it's like less elegant and it just will like not be good. It's like we have to make a Rube Goldberg machine in order to like detect player teleportation, but it should just work with a skulk sensor. Yeah, the problem with anything like that, moving the portal up and detecting player movement is they can sneak and bypass the skulk sensor. We don't want that. We want it to be 100% detection. This is very confusing, is it? A pressure plate would work, yep, but then you got clicking sounds. Again, we have to go through um, detecting the pressure plate and then we could use the, the other thing. What's the other thing here? Uh, the skulk shrieker. So we have to detect the pressure plate click with this and then the skulk shrieker goes off. If it was a player that made the sound, not a zombified piglin. And then we have to do something with that signal. Like it's like, we can't do it. But then we have to have the pressure plates and then we have to have the skulk shriekers and like, I don't know. It feels like it's just too much, right? It should just work as a player teleportation as described. The shrieker doesn't need a pressure plate. Interesting. So you're talking about having like a shrieker with a carpet on top or something. Hello, everybody. It's a me, a heap and no. Max decided he wanted to come by and say hello to you all because that's just the kind of kitty Max is. So here you go. You get your daily dose of Max. He is a big, fluffy kitty. Maximum floof. He's ready for his close-up. Waterlogged Shrieker is what Tango used in player detection and decked out too. What I was just thinking is using like a waterlogged Shrieker with a carpet on top that a player walks over. I don't know if that would actually detect with a carpet on top. I know if you stand on a Shrieker, it detects a player. I don't know if another mob walking on it makes it shriek. Don't need carpet, just put under the ground. So skulk shriekers don't shriek by themselves. They only work if you stand on them or if there's a skulk sensor that is triggered from a player made sound. Can you gonna purr into the microphone a little bit? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So anyway, you have to use them with a skulk sensor or the player has to walk directly on them in order for them to activate. Yeah, so you have to have a sensor. You can't just have the shrieker unless you're walking directly on the shrieker. Nice cat, what's its name and breed? This is Max. Max, this is everybody. And he's a rag doll. He is a big fluffy kitty. He's five. He's gonna be a six next month. You're gonna be an old cat next month. What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> he's just chilling. 
<laughs> Get a job. <laughs> he doesn't even pay his rent. What the heck? Big fluffy kitty. He's going to get you, chat. He's going to get you. Ragdoll, so much floof, no brain cells most of the time? Wow. Way to be like a profiler. Way to profile ragdolls. Max is a smart kitty. Uh, Matt Shorty, thank you for the 100 bits to help Max with rent. <laughs> Oh, oh, this one. Oh, we got another auto mod, which is not. Uh, 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 there we go. Auto mod, auto modding things. Jeez. Your tabby is all attitude, no brain cells. I like to think Max is smart. I mean, it's not like we can have like a conversation or anything, but he doesn't strike me as a dumb animal. He wants what he wants, which is normally like me to go play with him. Like go grab the little feather on a fishing rod thing or the laser or something along those lines. Or just give him attention. Your orange boys are dingbats. <laughs> I don't really know how to tell if a cat's smart or dumb though. Like he doesn't run into walls or anything. He's definitely very curious, like most cats are. Like I keep a lot of the rooms in this house closed, especially we. This house has three bathrooms in it. For instance, I use two of them. The third one I keep closed because I just don't need to use a third one. Dirty another one. But like if I ever go in there for some reason, he's like super interested. He's like, "What's in there? What's going on? I'm never, I don't know what's behind the door." <laughs> like you can tell, there's something going on upstairs. Uh, Leslie, thank you for the 100 bits. You got two brother cats, and they are the most affectionate cats you've ever met. You call your cat Perlock Holmes because she is always investigating something. All right, I'm going to put Kitty down. Putting Kitty down. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I can't hold Max for forever. He's a big kitty, if you couldn't tell. He's like, I can only hold him for so long before he's like, starts to feel his weight. They say that the cat box is the number of cat BL. I don't understand. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're going to. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. I think we're going to wrap it up here for today. Like, we didn't get a whole lot done. We made a new set of armor. Check it out. We're wearing uh, copper armor. We discovered a neat trick with armor stands. Again, I guess I can show them that to, like, some of the new people who didn't see this earlier. But we discovered a trick with these armor stands. We might make a mini game out of this. So if you use sweeping edge on an armor stand, the armor stand you use sweeping edge doesn't move, but the other ones do. Check that out. That's pretty cool, huh? So they all like leapfrog ahead. So like, there's some things here that we're gonna be experimenting with. I don't know what the mini game is gonna be, but we got some ideas rolling around with this concept. So you might see some sort of a mini game coming later. You want copper armor? 
Did I show you guys some of you newer people here? Have you seen my sets of armors that I have? Like, we have a lot of different armors now. From left to right, we have amethyst, redstone, emerald, copper, which I'm currently wearing, gold, diamond, and netherite. We almost got them all. We still need iron, quartz, and lapis, I think, are the three that we're missing. And all of these sets of armor, fully enchanted. We don't have fast, we don't have swift sneak on them, but we have everything else. We have everything else. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. We don't have um, soul speed on them either, but we can get that from our um, bartering farm. Is that a mod? Is what a mod? The armor? That's vanilla. If you're talking about the armor and the colors, no, this is vanilla Minecraft. As if the uh, armor trims is something they introduced, I don't know what version, but within like the last three years or something like that. Maybe four years now. It's been around for a little while. I'm the I'm the only hermit streaming, so I'm just gonna let you guys go. If there's another hermit streaming, I would send you over there, but there isn't. So, uh, in case you're wondering, this game does contain simulated goats. They're not real. They're just simulated. But that's it. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. If you're new to the channel, hit the follow button so you get notified when I go live again. We'll probably be back tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern time, which for those of you who are not in the United States is four hours earlier than it is right now. So tomorrow, four hours, then about 20 hours from now should be live again. Should be. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it. Have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for your support, everybody. Bye.